Hello, I'm Keetron Evans. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to look at a basic client-side attack, and the scenario consists of a web server whose home page has been modified to include an iframe that points to a waiting Linux server. Uh, and we're going to use that Linux server that's actually going to host the exploit to actually get onto the machine. Let's go ahead and take a look at it, look at how it works. So first thing we're going to do here is we need to basically set our uh, exploit up in Metasploit here and we're just going to use a cursor animation exploit and basically this exploit takes advantage of a weakness that uh, happens to exist in Internet Explorer um, all the way up to 7 and uh, even 8 so what we're going to do with it is we're just going to load this cursor animation exploit then we need to set a payload and I'll just go with today just a generic reverse shell Alright, next we need to go ahead and set uh, L host, and this is the IP address of our Linux server here that we're going to be using to do the attack, so let's get that. Alright, it's 106. We'll go ahead and set the other options with URI path, and we'll also set a local port 7371 and we will then <coughs> go ahead and set our server port and we will make that 80 because we want this thing to to listen on port 80 so it can act like a web server and then we're just going to say exploit and this is going to load the exploit for us now it's running and you see it's listening on port 80 on that IP address that's what we want so now let's go ahead and take a look at our let's say our web server that we've compromised to actually change the page so there's a Google HTML file that I've got here and it's basically just a copy of the Google page uh, I'm gonna open that page in notepad and I'm gonna go all the way down to the bottom and let you see uh, where the iframe is that's hidden in the page that's gonna make a call back to uh, the Linux server that we just set up now what that's going to do for us here is it's going to make it to where we can exploit a person uh, you know just by them visiting a particular website that we've been able to compromise in some way without compromising them directly or without having them to browse directly to our exploit server now um, fortunately you know this server uh, that, that's that we're putting this page on has IS running on it but I'm going to show you how to change the default page from whatever it is to uh, this fake version of Google here and we got our iframe notice it's got a height width of 100 and a height of 0 it needs to be at least those dimensions uh, you can't have it 0 0 and you can't just say invisible uh, but effectively a width of 0 and a height of excuse me a width of 100 and a height of 0 is invisible at least for what we need to do here so let's go ahead and look at the uh, IIS service and this is where we're going to actually change the web page and we're going to go drill down and get the default page we're going to right click and go to properties alright and then we're going to go to documents and we want to move google.htm all the way up now if you're doing this at home and you don't have the google page listed there you just need to add it and type the name and then move it up once you get it in there alright so next this guy here is our victim actually he's the one that's going to browse you know to this page that looks like google and it could be any page he's browsing to and this is the machine that hosts that page and he's got an IP address of 109 Okay, so this is who we're going to have the victim browse to, but the victim's going to get exploited by 106. So let's go ahead and take a look. So he browses to 109. And I purposely made a mistake in my iframe because I want, you know, I know some of you guys doing this are going to run into this issue where your exploit or your iframe doesn't work and I want to see what the most common problem is when, when you when you don't get it to work or at least when students in my class uh, have trouble with this it's usually uh, something very simple like an IP address or something like that in the wrong place and I'm going to show you how easily that could happen now notice we got Google but we don't have an exploit here 
uh, you know we didn't get a session or a shell on that victim machine so that's because look there that IP address is 106 what we put uh, we didn't put 106 in our iframe so we need to go back to our iframe and modify that thing and uh, make it point to the IP address of 106 and the exploit should work perfectly so let's go get that google.htm file again let's see here there it is alright so we're gonna edit that in notepad again alright and we'll go to the bottom here and uh, n see look at look at stupid me I screwed up there 108 is not the right IP it's 106 because we want the iframe to call to our Linux server that's actually got the client side exploit waiting on it alright so let's refresh this Google page on the Vic here on the victim and what we're gonna see this time if we go back and look at our exploit now we can see that we do have a shell so now all we need to do is enter the sessions command whoops sessions dash I one we want session one and we're on that machine so let's just make a directory ownage alright let's make a let's change that now let's make a user and let's call him owned by Keytron give him a password a blah uh, blah dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign yeah and it, notice Windows adds it making him a uh, administrator now owned by Keytron I think is it yep that's a user can I create it and we're gonna add that now we've uh, made this guy an administrator created an account made him an administrator now uh, I'm going to go out and start up a TFTP server on another machine. Let's just pretend like it's another web server that we've got some control over out on the web. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, now that I've got command line on this machine, I need a way to get things over there to do what I need to do. So let's just say I wanted to get, a, get passwords off this machine. So I'm going to start a TFTP server on my Windows, one of my Windows machines that are just happen to be out on the web. Uh, again, just pretend like you've got a TFTP server sitting out there that you have control over. And I'm going to now pull down uh, PW dump from that TFTP server because I want to use that later. Uh, and this will be in a later video. I want to use that to actually crack the passwords uh, for some of the user accounts that happen to be on this machine. So let's go ahead and do our TFTP I. 102 is the IP of my TFTP server. I want pwdump2 and I also need samdump.dll which is the other piece to pwdump to make it actually run. Alright, All right, so we got both of those. Let's go ahead and run pwdump and I want to write this file out to the root of C that includes the hashes um, to you know every account on this machine. So we'll do hashes by Keytron uh, text, and that's what we want to write it to. It's there. Now we're going to put that guy up on our TFTP server, so later we can just grab it off there and uh, start cracking away at those hashes. So let's put it, put it there, and uh, let's go ahead and use more from the command line to read that file to make sure it's actually got hashes in it. And there you are there are the hashes that's what we need uh, those hashes are what we what we're going to be using to actually crack later so um, that's pretty much it that's how the exploit works uh, you know let's go and check and make sure that everything worked out that we did the things we think so we'll look for the user owned by Keytron uh, there he is and let's see if he's an administrator so look at the groups administrators there he is uh, so we're all good with that alright guys appreciate you watching uh, hope to see you again soon